Zero dimension, dimensionless point. The zeroth dimension, or dimensionless point, might not make any sense. After all, how can there be a dimension that doesn't have any dimension? But the thing is that it's actually a straightforward concept. When driving to a specific location, you use your phone's GPS to know where this spot is. On the map, that point theoretically exists, but in reality, this dot doesn't exist and is only there to represent a location. In math and physics, these points represent positions or locations, and we don't even have to worry about how big or small these points are. They're placeholders that are simply there to represent precise locations in space. It's like having an imaginary friend. You know that this friend doesn't exist or take up space, but in your mind, it's like this friend exists in theory. Applied in your high school geometry, you usually used points to help describe the other dimensions, such as length, width, or height. They might not take up space, but they know how to show you the way. First dimension, length. Step outside your home and imagine a straight line through the sidewalk. Walk through this straight line without stepping sideways. You can only walk forward or backward. This journey represents the concept of the first dimension, which is length. Length is an important aspect of our world because it measures how far something can go in one direction. It only talks about movement along a straight line, like how something exists in an imaginary line from point A to point B. In between these points are objects or dots that exist infinitely. You encounter the first dimension every day Something as simple as measuring the length of a pencil is already an application of the first dimension. Similarly, when you're drawing a line on paper, you're already using the first dimension's basic concept. Or even when your girlfriend talks about your performance in bed, she's already applying her basic understanding of the first dimension. Second dimension, width. Try standing up in place right now, and then step sideways to your left or right. You're already applying the concept of the second dimension, width. It focuses on how much space something takes up from left or right. There's a yo mama so fat joke somewhere here, but let's leave that up to your imagination. Width is essentially the horizontal measure of an object. When you look at a table, you think about how much space it takes up from side to side instead of how much space it occupies in a straight line in front of you. You encounter width throughout your everyday life. You're already using this concept when going through a doorway because you're subconsciously thinking about whether you'd fit through it. Essentially, the second dimension adds a layer of information about how wide something is, allowing you to understand how much space an object object takes from a lateral or horizontal point of view. Third dimension, our dimension, depth. As you're looking at your phone now, you can pretty much measure the length and width of your screen, but there's another layer of space here, depending on your perception. We're talking about the distance between you and your phone from your point of view. In our world, depth is used to perceive how far apart things are. For example, depth tells you how far you are from the bookshelf if you're in a room. Essentially, it gives objects the appearance of being closer or farther away. Depth is also called our dimension because, in a sense, it's mostly all about perspective. It allows us to judge distances accurately without having to measure them. So when you're driving, you use your depth perception to tell how far your bumper is from the car in front of you and how much space there is between you and the vehicles around you. You're also using depth in something as simple as walking down the street because you can use depth to tell whether you're about to step on dog poop or a clean spot on the pavement. The third dimension is basically how much space we measure from our point of view instead of from another separate point. It's why our world has volume and why we can perceive distances. Fourth dimension mention time. When watching a movie on your phone or computer, you can move the pictures frame by frame. You can rewind, fast forward, or pause the movie. This is how the concept of movement in the fourth dimension works. The difference, however, is that you're not watching the movie from the outside looking in. Instead, you're moving through time. This means that the fact that you exist is already the reason why you're moving through time. As you watch your screen, time is moving together because you're aging. The fact that you're aging allows you to move through it. Then there's Einstein's theory of relativity, which says time isn't fixed because it can stretch or shrink depending on gravity and velocity, among other factors. This means that people perceive time differently. When someone is moving faster or experiencing stronger gravity, time moves differently. However, unlike when watching a movie, it is still impossible to pause or move backward in time. Instead, we can only move forward through time unless we have a time-traveling DeLorean. The important part, however, is that this concept also allows us to understand that while we can't move backward in time, the past still shapes the future. Fifth Dimension 
parallel universes. The fifth dimension concept, which refers to parallel dimensions, combines almost all of the things we know about the first four dimensions, but we add the element of choice in this discussion. The theory is that different realities exist parallel to the current reality that you live in. Your choices, as well as the choices of different people all over the world, help shape these realities. When faced with a scenario where you must make a choice, when faced with multiple choices, multiple realities immediately branch out. In this reality, you may be working working as an accountant, but in reality number 355, you chose to become an astronaut instead. Because infinite decisions can be made throughout a day, the theory is that there are also an infinite number of parallel universes that all branch out from different choices. But there's a reason why they're called parallel universes. Take a piece of paper and draw two lines parallel to one another. No matter how long those lines are, they will never intersect. Likewise, parallel universes will never intersect, making these other realities impossible for us to act access in theory. Sixth dimension, parallel universes plus time. You're probably already aware of how parallel universes work. These are alternate realities that exist alongside our own, but have a different set of events. But the element of time also adds a wrinkle to this discussion, allowing the theoretical sixth dimension to exist. In the sixth dimension, the concept of time connects the different parallel realities. These parallel universes still exist differently from one another, but time changes that concept, because you can now simultaneously see every possible parallel reality. Think of the sixth dimension as having a chart showing which actions lead to creating a new parallel timeline. It's a cosmic roadmap that may not necessarily connect every parallel universe, still it allows you to see how every action and event can shape the things that happen in one universe or another, as if they're all connected by these events. But don't think of it as knowing everything that can and will happen. Essentially, the sixth dimension only allows you to see every possible way the game could play out. It's like watching a walkthrough of a video game on YouTube before actually playing the game. Seventh Dimension Alternate Universes Let's say that you live in a huge mansion with many rooms. Each room represents a different universe, and every universe in this mansion has different physical laws and possibilities. That is theoretically what the seventh dimension is about. Everything, every possibility, and every outcome is happening simultaneously, making reality seem like a giant library where every book tells a different version of reality. It's just that different things are happening in all of these universes, and they may have different rules of physics. It's not the same as parallel realities, where every reality is similar to the reality that we know of, but has different events. Instead, these universes are entirely different, and any outcome is possible. Think of the seventh dimension as a place where all possible possibilities of existence can happen and are laid out in front of you in different universes. As difficult as it may be to imagine what the seventh dimension would look like, don't forget that this is completely theoretical. Eighth Dimension Alternate universes plus time. When we talk about the seventh dimension, we are looking at a tree of possibilities where every timeline and universe is right in front of you, happening simultaneously but in different universes with their own set of rules, events, and realities. But in the eighth dimension, we go beyond just these different universes branching out. Instead, the eighth dimension talks about how these timelines could interact with each other, creating a complex web of possibilities. Simply put, the eighth dimension goes beyond all of the possible timelines and how they interact with one another in a vast cosmic playground. Think of it as a dance floor, each dancer representing an alternate universe. But whenever these dancers interact with one another, they create new possibilities. In this dimension, the concept of cause and effect goes to an entirely different level, making everything that happens, has happened, and will happen intertwined with each other. This allows the past, present, and future to affect each other across every universe. It can be a headache to imagine what this stuff is all about, but if physicists go crazy trying to make sense of this concept, let's just say that it's perfectly fine if you don't get what the eighth dimension is. Ninth dimension, above reality concepts. Let's look at what we know about the physical realms of physics. We know that the first three dimensions are all physical. We're talking about length, width, and depth, which allow us to understand how objects take up space. Then the fourth dimension of time allows us to understand motion and change. But as we move beyond the simpler dimensions, things get more complicated. The ninth dimension exists as a way out of the realms of reality. Let's look at the dimensions as a box that limits the laws of physics, such as space, and time. But in the ninth dimension, the box doesn't exist because everything we know about the other dimensions gets thrown out, and it's entirely possible that physical laws don't apply here. Think of it this way. The first three dimensions allow you to feel an experience similar to watching a movie on a screen. 
On the other hand, the ninth dimension allows you to step outside the movie. You are no longer the things happening in the movie, making it an entirely different experience. Some theories suggest that all possibilities and timelines can exist in the ninth dimension at the same time, making it some sort of a super multiverse. It suggests that every choice you make and every event that could happen already exist in this large tapestry of possibilities that don't even care about the traditional laws of physics or the first four dimensions. Then again, the ninth dimension and all the other higher dimensions are entirely theoretical, existing only in the minds of the most imaginative physicists. Tenth dimension, higher dimensions. In the tenth dimension, we are not just looking at different timelines and alternate realities. Instead, we are looking at higher dimensions that allow reality to unfold from the smallest particle to the largest cosmic body in the vast multiverse. It's like you have a table of possibilities where every scenario and variation of existence is laid out like cards. But what makes the 10th dimension unique is that you're not just looking at different versions of reality happening right in front of you. Instead, you're theoretically looking at the very fabric of existence itself. To put it bluntly, it's not another layer of reality. The 10th dimension is essentially a backstage pass to how the universe unfolds and what kind of grand design has led to the creation of this giant cosmic multiverse. From the birth of the stars to the death of the tiniest subatomic particle, you see it all in a dimension that blurs the boundaries between what is happening and what could happen. It's difficult to understand, but this concept allows you to see just how complex the true workings of the universe can be. 11th Dimension theoretical omnipresence. You're walking on a steep ledge on a cliff. You can walk forward, backward, and maybe even sideways. Those are the first three dimensions. Now, the vibrations from falling rocks on the cliff add a new dynamic to what you're doing. The vibrations represent the fourth dimension, time. Now, let's say there are more ledges. They all vibrate differently. Every ledge represents a different timeline or possibility. This represents the fifth dimension, which discusses parallel realities that branch off from other realities. But when we get to the eleventh dimension, which is rooted in string theory, there are additional spatial dimensions well beyond the three dimensions of space that exist in reality. The eleventh dimension is theoretically a spatial dimension that serves as the master dimension where all of the different variations of string theory can coexist, making it a meeting place for all those complex cosmic ideas. Ideas. There's also the idea that the usual particles and forces we observe in our three-dimensional world may originate from more complex interactions in the 11th dimension. That's why the theory is that concepts like gravity, dark matter, and electromagnetism can be understood at a more fundamental level in higher dimensional realms, such as the 11th dimension. When applied in metaphysics, the 11th dimension could be a form of omnipresence, because everything exists at the same time across this higher spatial dimension. While it's impossible to hop on a plane to go on a trip to the theoretical 11th dimension, knowing that this realm possibly exists could change how we view our reality.